they showed movies on the plane on El Al, it actually, everybody saw the movie. It's not everybody had his little monitor. So the Kleisenberger Rebbe is on the plane, and all of a sudden the movie comes on. The Kleisenberger Rebbe says, could you please shut it off? I don't want it. The steward says, I'm sorry. You know, we have other passengers. You know, just because you're not interested, we can't, they're not shutting it off. The other says, hey, so he put his face in the, sa in, in the safer. A second later, the whole system shut down. The movie didn't work. They land in Lud, those Lud Airport, you know. Somehow they told the passengers, we apologize. There's a malfunction. It's working now. So the few, next flight, it's going to work. That's the way it worked, okay? So we're not at that level that this guy downstairs should have a, a pain in his arm that he can't drill <laughs> for our learning, okay? I don't know. Okay, Itmar. Two dots. Okay, what are we discussing? We're discussing the case. A person goes and he marries a woman, a katana, without consulting with the father, right? So, according to one opinion, okay, we definitely know what that Please get it closer. Okay, we discussed the case. A man marries a minor without consulting with the father. So, according to Shmuel, Shmuel had said she needs a get and she needs a meal. Right? She has to receive a get and she needs a meal. Meal means because she needs a get because maybe the father would have been agreeable. So, she's married on a Torah level. And she needs Mion. Why does she need Mion? Because if people would think that she was married and he should marry the sister, people would say the marriage is not a marriage and she's going to remarry without a get. So by having Mion, they will understand that it's only a rabbinical marriage, that it maybe it's, it wasn't a marriage and it was only a rabbinical marriage. So if, sh if there's Mion, it's, it annuls the marriage. So therefore, the second marriage is a marriage when she, he married the sister. That tells me it is a suffix. If it's a suffix, that means when he married the sister, she's suffix married, but she needs a get. So that means the second sister, she cannot marry a third party unless she received the get from the man who married her, although he was married originally to a sister, to the first sister. The first sister was a suffix. A person marries uh, Rachel, and it's a question whether his mar marriage is a marriage. He divorces her. Now he marries Leah. Right? Again, he has to give her a get. Because if, because if Rachel's marriage was not a marriage, that means he, was, he could be married to Leah. So that means he has to give Leah a get. But if you'd only have a get, you would not have Mion from Rachel. What do people say? He was definitely married to Rachel and never married to, to Leah. So Leah could remarry without anything. By having the Mion, people say if she was fully married to Rachel, why did she need Mion? So you see, it's not so simple. So if that's the case, she'll need a get. Leia will need a get if she wants to remarry. Mia reveals that it was nev not a definite marriage. That means it, it's a marriage. Doesn't make a difference. Doesn't make a difference. But it's a marriage. She cannot remarry without a get. Correct. You can't live with her. You can't live with her. Right. So we're talking about he's married to the first, he marries this, this minor, he marries the minor, like we said, who needs a get and mion, but he doesn't do anything. Doesn't. Doesn't give the get, doesn't do the mion, and he, he dies. Yaakov marries Rochel, who's a katana, without consulting with Lovon. So factually, it's a question, is the marriage a marriage, not a marriage? And he dies, and he has a brother. Yaakov has a brother, okay? Yaakov's brother is Esau. Esau. So Rachel falls to Yibum to Esau. Right? It's a question. It may be Yibum. Wait. If, in fact, he was married to Rachel, right? If Yaakov was married to Rachel, that means she's bound. He, he, he could do Yibum either way. He could do Yibum. If he was married, he has to do Yibum. If he was not married, that means she was single. Right? She's a single woman. So he definitely could, he could have relations with her. So let it not be called Jibo. I know it doesn't make a difference. It doesn't make a difference. 
If he was married, then he has an obligation. Yibum or chalitza, right? We're talking about sinim or chalitza. If she wants to remarry, what does he have to do? He has to give a chalitza. Of course, he may have been married. She may have been married to Yaakov. To Suffolk. So chalitza definitely he needs. She needs. Okay? What happens? The brother, the surviving brother, Esav, he doesn't do Yibam right away, but he does minor. He does the exact same thing as his brother did. He marries the minor, who's the widow, without consulting with the father. He does the exact same thing. So now we have the question. Now he decides he doesn't want to be with her. He doesn't want to be with her. After Mimer. What does she need to be permitted to remarry a third per person? So the is going to say in a moment, she needs three things. She needs Chalitza, she needs Get, and she needs, she needs Mion. All three she needs. We'll see. It's my mess. In the case where he married the minor without the father's permission, and she falls to the brother, the surviving brother, V'yibum. Omer Rafuna, Omer Rav, Rafuna says, Mema'enes Limamoro. Okay? And he does mimer, mm -hmm. so, because she's a minor, she has to do miun, correct? Miun she needs. Menes le mamoro. Ve eno ma menes le zikoso. But miun doesn't help for the ziko means, because there's a bond between her and, and the what, and the surviving brother, because she may have been married to what? To, to, to Yaakov. Right? Rochel may have been married to Yaakov. For ziko, the only thing that terminates that connection, need chalitza. Correct? Okay? Ketzad also. Ketzad. What is the case? Also by Mimer. The Esav does marries the Yavoma with Kedushin. That's called Mimer. Tzricha get, Tzricha chalitza, or Tzricha miyun. She needs three things. She needs a get, she needs chalitza, she needs miyun. Tzricha get. What does she need a get? Shem and Yisratzo b'kedushi sheinik. Because maybe the father, Lavan, was agreeable that Esav should be a son-in-law. So if that's the case, she's married, the Mimer, and it's not called Mimer, it's Kedushin. Tzricha Chalitza, but she needs the Chalitza to terminate the connection to, to Yaakov. Shem in the Shratza of, the Kedushin Rishon, correct? Because maybe Lovon was agreeable that Yaakov should marry her, mm -hmm. so that means she's the bona fide wife of Yaakov, so now she falls to Yibum. So therefore she needs Chalitza to terminate that connection between herself and Yaakov, Right? It may be a Kedushim Doraisa. It may be a Kedushim Doraisa also. Let's say he wasn't agreeable to, the, to Yaakov's marriage, but he is agreeable to Esau's marriage. Right, so that's, that's Kedushim on a Torah level. Right. So definitely he needs a, she needs to get from, from Esau. Because right, so she she's a minor. She's a minor. With no, we don't know. We don't know. We don't know exactly what the father's mindset was. The father's not here. So she may, the father may have been agreeable to her to be married to Yaakov. So if she's married to Yaakov, that means there's Zika. That means she's a bona fide Yavoma. Wait, 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 wait. Correct, correct. So but then she needs Chalitza. But if he would have been opposed to Yaakov, that means so when Esav marries her, and Esav is more like his, to his liking, right? Esav and Lovon. So maybe she's married to, to Esav. Esav now wants to divorce her. What does he have to do? He has to give her a get. Because the marriage may be on a Torah level. May be a, she, he may be married to, to Rochel. Okay? So that's what we're saying. Shem and Nisratza Abigdushi Sheinit. So therefore she needs a get. Tzricha Chalitza. What does she need Chalitza to terminate the Zika? That's the connection between them. Shem and Nisratza Abigdushi Rishon. Because he may have been agreeable to the first marriage. Okay? Tzricha Miun. What does she need Miun? Shem and Nisratza Abigdushi Rishon. Lo Abigdushi Sheinit. She may have been not as in either. Okay? But what are people going to say? The Yomro, so she's going to marry without anything. Right? So they're going to say, Esav's marriage to her was not a marriage. Okay? The Yomro in Kedushin Tovsa Bachosa. So people say, you know, she can marry without anything. But that, that becomes a problem, like we said earlier. So therefore, we have to do all three. This is the same, same as before. Lo osoba maimer. What about if Esau, the Yovam, did not do kedushin? She just falls to Yibum from, from his brother. 
If Yaakov would want to divorce her, he would have to give her a get with eat meal, right? Yaakov would marry the minor without consulting with the father. Ace, she falls to Asaph. Asaph does nothing. Doesn't marry her. What does Asaph have to do, do to allow her to remarry? Just Chalitza, right? Because all, at worst, what's left? What's left is what? Is, chal- is, is Zika. That's all. That's all that there is. She says, Lo osa b'maymer, ene tzuchel chalitza b'vod. Why? My amret. Why? Why is chalitza sufficient? My amret. Tiboi nami miun. Maybe you should need miun. Because shemot yomru, ene kedushin tovsem b'achosa. They're going to say that if you don't need miun, they'll say he was never married to her. One second. Hako yodim achos chalutza jirabona. Now, interesting, interesting. The Torah says, Achos Ishto, if you're married to, Yaakov is married to Rochel. While he's married to Rochel, he definitely cannot marry Leah. The sisters, right? You're not permitted to ma- be married to two sisters. What happens if Yaakov divorces Rochel and now wants to marry Leah? Also not permitted. Because Torah says, Becha Yeho. As long as his first wife is alive, although she's no longer his wife, he's not permitted to marry the sister. That's called Achos Ishto. What about a man is bound chalitza wise? Let's say before, before he divorces, before he does chalitza, is is Asaph permitted to marry Leah? He's not permitted to marry Leah. Why? Because there's a connection on the Torah level between himself and Rochel. There's a zika. Now let's say he terminates that relationship with chalitza. Is he permitted to marry Leah now? On the Torah level, he is permitted. Because she's not Achos Ishto. She's Achos Chalutzoso. She's the sister of the one at one time where there was a connection of Zika. The Torah never forbade that. While the Zika is there, you cannot marry the sister. But once the, that connection was severed through Chalitza, now on a Torah level, you can marry. No, no, but there's no man didn't do Mimer. Didn't do Mimer. Ruf, Esau... Forget about Mimer. Forget about Mimer. Regular case. A man dies, and he, 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 whatever it is. And now his brother gives Chalitza to, 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 to his sister-in-law, to the widow. Now he wants to marry the sister of the Yavama. After, is he permitted? Rabbinic, on the Torah level, he's permitted. Rabbinically, we don't allow it. No, but because, because people c- confuse this with Achos Ishto. Because since there was some degree of connection between himself and the, the, the sister, people would confuse this with Achos Ishto. So Achos Chalutza, so the sister of the Chalutza, who the one time there was a Zika, could be confused. So he says, the reason why you don't have to give Mimer, because everybody knows that Achos Chalutza is rabbinical. That's, it's like a known fact. So it's rabbinical, so if he should marry the sister, there's not a consideration that she's going to ma- remarry without a get. They will not allow it. Before we, the question was, we were concerned that if he married... Rochel, and then he marries subsequently Leo. If you don't do uh, Mion, what are people going to say that the condition to Leo was nothing? So Leo is going to remarry mm. without a get, correct? But over here, if he does Kedushin to Leo, if these Chalitza, people will know that definitely she needs a get. Because that, why wasn't he permitted to marry the sister of his Chalitza? It's only rabbinical. So if it's only rabbinical, people will say definitely she's married to Esau. So people will know if she does not have a get, she's not going to be permitted to anyone, so therefore she'll have to receive the get from Esau. You following? So therefore that, 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 that blind spot will not exist. That confusion or that issue is not an issue. Ruvain, Yaakov marries Leah, Rachel. And then afterwards he divorces her. And he marries and he does Kedushin to Leah. What, are people, what will people say if there's no mean? Leo definitely doesn't need to get. She could marry a third party. Because they, they were never married. But that's not the case. Because there's this chance that he wasn't married to Rochel. By giving Mion, by giving Mion to, to, to Rochel shows that it's not, cl- it's not simple that he was married to Rochel. So the marriage delay may be a marriage. Right? Because over there we're dealing with Achos Ishto. If we're dealing with Yaakov, that's Achos Ishto. Achos Ishto is a Torah provision. That's incest on the Torah level. Achos Chalutz also... Esau now, the sister of his chalutz, the one he had given chalitza to. Right? That's not incest on a Torah level. That's permitted. Rabbinically, we don't allow it. He, now he does act, does an act of kedushin to Leah. To Leah. Right? 
So we're saying over there, and she's a, she's a minor. We're talking about Rochel was a minor. So we should have to have meal that people should know that. It's not necessary. Because since everybody knows it's rabbinical, why he's not permitted to marry Leah? Therefore, people know that the marriage to Leah is a marriage. It's a marriage. As if it's a marriage, there's no way anybody will marry her unless she has a get. It's valid on the Torah level. Right? It's like a, a Kohen marries a Grusha. He's not permitted to marry a Grusha. But if he marries the Grusha, it's his wife. It's his wife. And everybody knows that. So nobody would even consider... If a person, if a koi marries a grusha, nobody will marry that woman unless she has a get. It's clear. Domar ish lokish, kachshona Rebbe achos grusha midoraisa. Regarding this particular halacha, Rebbe had said, the sister of one's divorcee, that's a Torah provision. That's achos ishto, achos chalutza midivri sofrim. But the sister of the chalutza, where initially there was that connection because of yibum. That's only rabbinical why you're not permitted to marry the sister of your chalutza. Okay? Hani betray. They have a kushosu chamro. With these two Jews, they were drinking wine together. You no know, wine pub. Tusi tzipi bebovim. So there's a question. They were sitting under tzipi. So Rosh is one. They were sitting under a caper tree. I always thought a caper was a caper bush. But evidently, it's a tree also, Rashi says. It's high enough, so we're sitting under this tree. Or another Pshadi says, they were like mats covering. You know, it's like a person has a, what's it called, David, a pergola? Okay, and you put the, these mats across the top, and they were sitting to, to protect the person from the sun. That's the other interpretation of tzipi. they like mats. In Bavil, Shokol Chadmi Nayu, Kasid Chamra. One of them takes the cup of wine, which is definitely a Shavit Pruto. It's a Shavit Pruto. Cup of wine. Yovle Lechavre. And he gives the cup of wine to his fellow. Omar Mikach Libratech Libri. He says, I want, you said, the father has a minor daughter, and the man has a son. He says, Take this cup of wine on behalf of your daughter, and I am representing my son, and. I'm giving it in marriage for my son that your daughter should be my son's wife. You hear what he says? He takes the cup of wine, which is a shove of definitely, gives it to his fellow, and he says, take this cup of wine in marriage on behalf of your daughter. And since she's a minor, she, he's the equivalent of the daughter. So there's no question, he is the daughter. The question is, who is the father regarding his son? Right? His son is an adult. His son is not a minor. Right? No, we'll see. He agreed. He agreed. He took the wine. He didn't say no. When you give a ring to a woman, does she have to say yes? She does not have to say yes. Her silence means she's accepting it. Otherwise, she would have protested. Right? It's every marriage. This is this. But he said clearly, I'm giving this in marriage on behalf of my son to you for your daughter. I'm not talking about they're intoxicated here. The father, the boy. That's what we're we'll going to discuss. Okay, now, a daughter is in the, in the domain of the father until she becomes fully mature, until she becomes a Bulgaris. Until the age of 12 and a half, she's, he, she is in his domain, right? A son is never in the domain of a father, ever, even as a minor, right? A father nullifies the vows of a daughter. A son never doesn't nullify the vows of a son. A daughter uh, can be sold as a maidservant. A son cannot be sold as a slave. No such thing. The son is not in the domain. The son, even as a minor, is independent of the father. Okay? So the only way the father could represent the son is only as a shaliach. If he's not a shaliach, he can't represent the son. Okay? And we'll see tomorrow, he did not consult with the son over here. He figures it's a good match. Why not? Take advantage. Okay? This is unbeknown to the son. Omer Avino. Afilum adiyom chashino shem nisratza av. Even according to Shmuel, that we say that there's a possibility regarding a, a girl that maybe the father would be in agreement that this man should be a son-in-law. No, that's a daughter, a daughter, a father for a daughter. We're saying, even according to the opinion Shmuel. Shmuel says that if a man marries a, a minor without consulting with the father, she needs a get and needs me on. Because there's a chance 
maybe the father would have been agreeable. So we're saying, even according to Shmuel, Ula says she needs nothing, right? Even according to Shmuel, who's machmir, that you need a get and you need mion. In regard to the son, it would be different. Why? We had earlier on that base, on the first Omid in the Perak, there's a concept known as Tabla Mesav Tandu Mesav Amma That a woman, she prefers to be with somebody rather than be by herself. So therefore, a father would prefer, would it be agreeable, even that's unbeknown to the, to the what, to the father, why do we say the father would be, be in agreement? Because it's a, a husband for his daughter. It's better his daughter should have a husband than be, not have a husband. But we don't say such a thing regarding a man. A man says, you know, I want to make my own choice. I'll, I'll, I'll fend for myself in this area. Okay? So we'll see. So he's saying, even according to the opinion, that regarding if a man marries a minor without consulting the father, there's a, there's a chance, a possibility the father may be in agreement, and therefore she needs to get Shema. But maybe if the son was not consulted, where the father is acting as an agent on his behalf, we don't say this. So Rashi says, why? Top Rashi and Ahmed Beis, B'Kedushin Shekidi Shlo'av Shlo'bidaito. A father wants to act on the behalf of the son without his knowledge. Lo'aminon. Da'av Lo'aminon. We don't say such a thing. There's even the consideration that the marriage would be a marriage. Why? Da'av B'Kedushi Dito B'choldu Necholei. A father regarding his daughter being married, even to the slightest degree, there's a possibility he has an interest. Why? He'd be in agreement. The tab of the Mesa Tandu, because the father wants his daughter not to be left alone. She should have a mate. Avul Gavro, but regarding a man, Dayik Venosa, man, he says, Look, I want to do my own checking. I don't want you to pick a wife for me. I want to decide myself who, who will be my wife. Therefore, we could say with certainty, the son does not want his father to represent him. So if that's the case, regardless of the father's intention, it's nothing, it's meaningless. And a son is not in the domain of the father that he could bring about Kedushin unless he's appointed to be his agent. So since over here the father was not appointed by the son to be his agent, they put nothing. Right? That's what this is what Ravina says. Therefore it's nothing. It's a presumption. The presumption is the son would have not been in agreement. Regarding a father, there's a chance he would want it. Because there's a concept, Tam Lame Tandu. Yeah, but then, we'll make a differentiation between representing a son unbeknown to the son or represent doing something on behalf of the father without consulting with the father. If the father would know, he'd be in agreement regarding his daughter. But the son would not be in agreement. If his father wants to represent him, unless he knows. That, that, that's what Ravina is saying. Therefore, it's not a consideration. The marriage will be a marriage. Okay? Amri Le Rabbonon, the Ravino, Vidilma Shaliach Shavio. Maybe, maybe that that the father acted on, on behalf of the son, maybe there's something we don't know. It's true. A son is not in the domain of this father. He cannot act on him without his permission, unless he was actually delegated by the son. But maybe he was delegated by the son. Otherwise, he would not act on behalf of the son. Maybe there should be such a concern. Let's say he walked away afterwards. The father walked away, but we weren't able to verify whether he was or not. But maybe there's, there's a chance. Maybe he appointed his father to be his agent. He told his father, if you see a good catch, act on my behalf. Maybe that would, that's what happened. Person is, is not that insolent mm -hmm. that he should have his father do his bidding. That he should be the shliach. What is this? His father is his lackey. No, act be my agent. So since it's something which is totally inappropriate, the presumption is it's not even a consideration to think that he appointed him to be a shliach. So Mara answers, ask to deal my artsy kame. But maybe the the son initially had said to the father, he has an interest in that girl. So we said the only reason why we say the marriage is not a marriage because regarding a daughter, it's tabla mesev tandu. 
A father wants his daughter should have a husband, but a man says, I want to do my own checking. Let's say the, fa- the son shared with his father, that girl I have an interest in. He, not that he pointed the father Shlia, right? But he revealed his, his, his interest. So if that's the case, if I want, let's say a father um, wants to purchase something on behalf of his son, which is something beneficial to his son. So we, we say, Shemitam Shlichus, right? That the one who takes possession on behalf of the one who's benefiting is considered his agent. A father wants to buy a gift for his son, and it's a gift the, fa- the son definitely would want. So how does, the moment he purchases it, the father is, is an agent on behalf of the son. Oh, we're going to say, Luchotza finish? Right there, the son, the father, knowing it's something the son would want, we say, So because over here the son revealed his intent to the father, that he has an interest in this girl, in this particular girl, so now the father is acting based on the principle of He's doing an act on behalf of the son, knowing factually it's something which is beneficial to his son. So maybe we should be concerned. That's what happened. That's the background information. And therefore she's married. But his intent could have been told by the son ahead of time. Yeah, maybe. We're saying maybe. Why does Ravina say it's definitely nothing? Maybe there's such a possibility the fa- son had revealed his intent to the father. And now the father sees that he's able to take, to, to, to take possession, to, to do the act on behalf of the son. That's why he's doing it. So that's the worst question. Right? One second. No, we don't know. We don't know no, anything. No, we don't know. So they're not. Then the presumption is... It's a what the son says afterwards. The son says, I want to do my own checking. I don't want you to pick my wife. But here the man already said, revealed to his father, I have an interest. Not that he pointed his father as a shliach. He said, I have an interest. So now there's the principle of Zohar Nod Mishal Bafanov. Once you reveal, he has the interest. We do say that. We do say that. The girl's never a problem. We don't know. We don't know if Tandla Mesa Tandu is 100% or not, but it's enough to create a suffix. It's enough to create a suffix. Regarding a son, it's not even a suffix. It's nothing. We say with absolute certainty, his son doesn't want his father to pick a wife for him. But now so we're asking a question. How do you dismiss it so quickly? Maybe the son had shared with his father that he has an interest. So therefore, he's not picking the wife. The son already said he's interested. So why is the father now able to act on behalf of the son? He didn't appoint him to Shalia. The principle of Zohar Nod Bafonov. Since it's something which is advantageous to the son, therefore he could act as his agent. The son is telling him that he wants to marry this girl. No, we, we don't know. We don't know. We don't know. If we know factually he said that, we'll say Zohar Nod Bafonov. We don't know. The question is, now everybody walks away. What is the status of this girl? Does she need a get? Does she not need a get? Rinda says, definitely not. So Mar says, how do you just dismiss it so easily? Maybe the, fa- the son had revealed his, his intent, his interest to the father, and now the father is acting based on the principle of Tzchiyo to marry on behalf of the son. So how do you let the girl remarry without a get? She may be married. That, that's the question of Rinda. Evidently, it's not so simple. Why? Why? If a son talks to father, son is father, who are you interested in? He says, you know, I'm interested in that family. Okay, so you already revealed his interest. It's a possibility. It's not so far-fetched, right? Right? I mean, if a person has a relationship with the son, they discuss these things. Mm-hmm. What are you, who are you interested in marrying? Who are you not interested in marrying? Oma lei, Oma lehu rabba bar simi, beferish oma mard lo sova leho de rabu shmuel. He says, Ravina says, uh, he rejects Rav and Shmuel. He said, if you reject Rav and Shmuel, we don't have to talk from the, the father's vantage point, even from the girl. She doesn't need to get, right? Unless, you know, explicitly the father wants to marry the girl. It's like, it's like Ula. It's like Ula.
Lo sova the Rabbi Shmuel, Shem Yisratze Av, Koshkim Shem Osa Aben Shliach. Meaning, since it's a Koshkim, see here the father. In our case, the father is accepting the cup of wine on behalf of his daughter. But he says, if normally, if we don't know if the father agreed or not, we say definitely it's nothing. So to to say there's a possibility maybe the son was interested, we definitely would dismiss it. If we don't say Tavon Mase of Tandu is enough to make it into a Suffolk Kedushin, so to make it that she's maybe she's maybe married because maybe you revealed it to the son, that the son revealed to us definitely we're not going to say. If it's nothing, the marriage is nothing. No, 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 no. We're saying, we're saying Ravina disagrees with Rabbi Shmuel. So if you disagree, that means if a man marries a girl without her father's knowledge, it's definitely nothing. She needs no get, no meal. So now we have a question. A uh, father marries a girl on behalf of his son where the son did not appoint him as a shliach. There's a possibility maybe the son revealed that he has an interest. So we say it's nothing. It's a, it's a Russian. It's a Kolshke. Tavdom is Tandu, which is a fact. And we say that's enough, not enough for the father to be agreeable, even to be considered to be considered a marriage. So we here where the son normally wants to pick his own wife. We're going to say there's a possibility maybe he revealed his intent to the father. We definitely were not going to say it. Therefore, it's nothing. Therefore, she, he, she can marry without a get. How Gavro, another case. The Kodesh Bishika Bikisha Diarko. Bishuka. Person takes a clump of scallions, vegetables. You hear this? Five for a, five for a quarter. Okay? Radishes. Or, uh, pars- or parsnips. Okay? Kisha Diarko. A bunch of, 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 of greens in the market. And he marries a woman. Okay? No, we're not talking a minor. No. Doesn't have to be. Guda uktana shlo ledas of yeho. It's without. It's a minor without a father's knowledge. It would be a suffix. Even called Rabbi Shmuel. It's a suffix. A regular girl? A girl that's a regular? No, 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 no. If you give it, she's an adult, even if you give it the, the clump of vegetables, it's, it's a marriage. So we're talking a minor. The question, the father, would the father be agreeable to this kind of husband who gives his daughter a clump of vegetables in the market for marriage. Does he want that kind of son-in-law? No? Evidently, this man is, is what? Has, is lacking a certain degree of sensitivity. The person used to come here many years ago. He was a Sephardi. He's a Balchuva. And he became a Balchuva here about 27, 28 years ago. And when he married his wife in Israel, so in Israel, uh, Ashkenazi Ksuba, it says the amount of money in the Ksuba. Sephardi Ksuba, you fill in how much. So he marries his wife. He came from a Turkish family. She came from, um, I think, Bukharan. And they ride under the chuppah. 10,000 shekel. Okay. And he saw they were upset. Oh, maybe 5,000 shekel. In those days, maybe they called lira. They didn't even call it shekel. So he didn't know. He said, what do you do wrong? They said, what kind of son will we take it? He's giving to the, normally he'd say, 100,000 shekel, 200,000 shekel. That's a husband, you know. He appreciates his wife, you know. Firstly, he doesn't plan to divorce her anyway. And you don't, you, don't, you don't think about dying. So you put in 100, 200,000 shekel, 5,000 shekel. Mm-hmm. What kind of human being are you? What kind of son in law we get involved with? So they were insulted. We say uh, there's a chance the father, although he wasn't consulted with, he may want the marriage. But if this is the kind of husband, he gives her a clump of greens in the market. You know, what kind of husband, what kind of man he is? Maybe he's totally opposed to it. We don't, we don't even know what the presumption is in this some case. Now we Rab, have Rab and Shmuel say, say there's, there's no presumption, but there's a chance there may be. So now this, the this, this takes it down one notch. This takes this it down another notch. The presumption is less. It, right, exactly. That's the question. That's what we're discussing over here. Because there's a bazillion. It's a disgrace. This man is, is, is disgracing the daughter. Okay? Just two, two seconds. One moment. What's the question? Even the court of Rav Shmuel says we have to be concerned. Maybe the father would be agreeable. Shem starts hani mil derech kavod. If he marries his daughter in a respectful way, about derech bezoyim, but in, in a disgraceful manner, definitely there's not even presumption. There's no consideration. It's nothing. Now we have a question. There were two facts here. There was a clump of greens, 
and it was in, in the market. So the setting wasn't the appropriate setting, and the item he gave it wasn't appropriate. Is it because it was compounded, or each one individual would be enough that that's not considered respectful and appropriate? 